Hey everybody, this is just a quick video to show you how to transfer a GPX file to your Garmin. So let's just say you've got a sportive coming up, some sort of event. So here's an example on the Grand Fondo Conway site. Let's just say you'd booked into that one. Uh, you can usually find a link that says root info. And there we go, there's three particular varieties for this one. Let's have a look at another example. Let's just say you were booked in to do the Cheshire Cat. You can look at the site there. There's, again, a few different versions of the ride and conveniently they've got a GPX file download for each one. Okay, so let's just pretend we're doing the 50 mile one. And if I click this little drop down on Chrome, uh, I've got an option that says show in folder. For some reason it's come up with this crazy name. which I would be tempted to rename Cheshire Cat. This won't affect how the file is displayed on your actual Garmin because that's encoded within the file itself. Um, I wasn't planning to cover that sort of stuff, but if we do edit with, I've got this program called Notepad++, and if we actually open the file, you see there it says name cat15 short. So that's the name that would appear on your actual Garmin readout so when you're looking through your list of courses and so on. So you can go ahead and edit that if you want for any file that you download, um, but I'm not going to for this purpose, but that's how you do it. A little bonus bit of information there for you, might find, find useful. So of course the key question now is, we've got this on our computer, I've, in my case it's in my downloads folder, but it's no use there, we need it on the Garmin itself, don't we? So how do we do that? If you're on a Windows PC, you can go to your My Computer icon and that will show you all the different drives on the computer. So you've got a C drive and you might well have an E drive and an F and a G and whatever else um, you've got attached to your computer. So you might see a bunch of drives and they all relate to different things on, the, on your computer. Once you've plugged your Garmin in via a USB cable, you should then see at least one option like that and possibly another one if it's got an SD card in it. So the one with the blue triangle is the Garmin unit itself, the internal memory. And uh, on mine it comes up as removable disk J, but the letter on yours might vary. And that's um, showing you what's on the SD card, okay? It doesn't matter which um, drive you copy the file over to. Let's have a look at the internal memory. If we go in there, there's a bunch of files and there's a Garmin folder. That's the important one. So go into the Garmin folder. And then there's a whole bunch of files there that all store different types of things that the Garmin reads. But for what we need here, it's the new files folder. Yeah, so look at that folder called new files, open that, and you'll notice it's empty. So all we're going to do, I've got my new files folder there. I've got my file I downloaded here. So I'm just going to drag that over there. And on Windows 7, it's telling me I can copy that to new files folder. So I'll do that. Okay. So it's just copying that over, and there we are. I can see my file, Cheshire Cat, in the Garmin New Files folder. You could do the same thing with your SD card as well, uh, but bear in mind, if it was a brand new SD card, you wouldn't have a folder called Garmin on there already, so you would need to create one. And on Windows, that's simple. You just right-click, New Folder, and then you can make a folder and call it whatever you want. So obviously make sure you call it Garmin. Okay, so as I said, this is just a video walkthrough of the tutorial that's on the site anyway so um, it's all there for you to read through this is just a video version in case you prefer digesting information in that way um, once you've copied the file over all you need to do then is disconnect your Garmin from the computer uh, so just disconnect the USB lead to take it out and then press the power button to boot up the the Garmin again uh, once it's booted up you should then be able to navigate through your menus, this is uh, the screenshots from the Edge 800. Uh, if you hit the courses link, you'll then see the appropriate course there based on whatever the name was of the file you copied over. When you load a course for the very first time, a bunch of default settings apply to it. So the first time you run a course, it's useful just to amend those settings a little bit. So select your course from your list, then hit your spanner icon, and then you'll notice that turn guidance will be off by default. This is on an 800, anyway, Garmin Edge 800. So you can turn the turn by turn guidance on if you want it. And similarly, the virtual partner's default position is on, but most of the time, I would imagine, you'd want that off. 
I know a lot of people recommend having the virtual partner off if you're going to be relying on turn guidance. Um, personally, I've never found a problem with having both of them on, but I know some people recommend you, you to have the VP off just in case it sort of contributes to glitchiness or crashing. Okay, hope that was useful to you. Don't forget to sign up for the mailing list, uh, subscribe on YouTube, um, like on Facebook and all those other things. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye.